Hey! What's up? That was easy enough, right? Not too bad? Yeah, not too bad. Your lighting's way better than mine. My room is like very dark. How are ya? Good, how are you? Yeah, I had to fix my lighting. I had to turn off the light because the natural light looks better. Yes, it does. We, it's all rainy and gross here, so we don't have that right now. All right, so um, I guess I'm just going to kind of start out with like a little introduction, kind of explain what I'm doing, then you can get into your intro, and then people just pop on and off um, throughout our conversation. There, If you haven't done a live before, all the people that are joining are just on the bottom, and then people can ask questions, and yeah, it'll be super fun. Okay, sounds good. All right, so for everyone that is hopping on current, or who is currently on our live or who will be hopping on in the near future. Hi, my name is Ellie and um, this is my wonderful friend, Brooke. Brooke? <laughs> okay. Hello, this is me. my wonderful friend, Brooke, who will be introducing herself in a second. Um, what we are going to be doing, this is the first um, episode, per se, of my new Instagram talk show that I've started and it's called Chat E. So what we're going to be doing is each week I will be talking with someone different, interviewing them to kind of talk about um, their profession and what area they're thriving in or like it could be something that they're super interested in. So today we are going to be discussing how to show up for racial justice with my wonderful friend Brooke. Brooke, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you? Yeah, for sure. So my name is Brooke. Um, I currently live in Columbus, Ohio. I am a social worker. I have my undergraduate degree in social work from Ohio State, my master's degree in social work from Ohio State, and I am a licensed social worker in the state of Ohio. Um, so I've been a social worker for about two years. Um, it's been a great experience so far. I've worked in foster care. Then I actually went back to school and got my master's degree. Did an internship with the city of Columbus working in, in grant work, so kind of doing um, work kind of in a macro level um, with the like local government. Um, so yeah, I'm just really passionate about anything racial justice, social justice. That is all like my favorite things. That's the books I read, TV shows I watch, podcasts I listen to, just kind of like everything I ingest. It's really a passion of mine. Um, honestly, found my way. I always kind of knew I was interested in that kind of stuff, but really being in the College of Social Work kind of like showed me all the injustices in our society noticeable, not noticeable, you know, seen very like clearly, um, kind of hidden by policies and all of those kinds of things. So it kind of just got me thinking that this is kind of what I want to work towards. And it's kind of just my passion. And I'm kind of taking it from there. No, and it's absolutely wonderful. When um, everything was taking place over the course of the last month with the protests and Black Lives Matter, I'd seen um, Brooke was at all of the protests and I saw her posting all over her story. And honestly, I was ready to be educated more. So she is the person I was like, hey, Let's learn. I would love to learn from you. So I thought this would be an awesome opportunity. Um, I'm going to be asking her some questions, but then the floor will be open um, throughout so that if anyone has any questions that they'd like to ask Brooke, um, you can send them your way. So the whole intent behind Chat E is just kind of to be encouraging, to motivate people, to educate, and just allow us all to connect. You know, this is super fun. Like, I don't go live very often, but I'm going to try and make it more of a thing because it's very personal like we haven't seen each other in so long and it's like hey nice to catch up you know i know so. i know and i i this is my first live so i'm honored to be here you know figuring it out i, mean, I keep seeing people join and like you know kind of be on it i'm like all right hey peeps you know getting used to the flow but i like to chat so we're ready for anything right exactly me too chatting is like my favorite thing so all right so ready for the first question yes i am all right so how do individuals develop their own personal values and beliefs in regards to issues of social justice or just in general? So first, yeah, definitely a great question. Um, I would say that we are definitely products of our environment, mm -hmm. um, culture, where we live, like, you know, the state, rural, urban, family, friends, all of that kind of plays into how you kind of build your own values and beliefs. It's kind of like what you're surrounded with, what you're kind of like exposed to, and then what kind of people talk to you about and kind of how you walk through, through the world, um, how you experience the world and things like that. 
Um, so yeah, even school, even everything that you touch in your daily life kind of contributes to your beliefs and your values alongside the conversations you have, like say your parents have these strong values, they talk about them around you and especially as a child, something like that, you might be able to pick up on those, um, conversations you have with friends, you know, all of those surroundings, um, really and how you interact with the world kind of go back and create your own values and beliefs so it's very unique to everybody um you know there's a million different values and beliefs you can mm -hmm. have some people have overlapping ones some people you know they're just all over the place but it's really interesting when you think about how much like we interact like how much our society interacts with with us just from being you know living breathing and like you don't really understand how much that contributes to how you view the world until you kind of reflect think back and kind of like see the thoughts and like beliefs that you have and be like wow is do I do I believe this because this is the only way I've experienced this world before so it's kind of a very absolutely that's yeah. kind of my take on it I know everyone could have different things to add I definitely miss some things too but that's really it's interesting to really think like that no and I think that that's so great because and this is something I've learned like you said the people that surround us are like where our beliefs and our values form from you know um but the thing is is like as we get older and as we ourselves we can have our own beliefs we don't have to follow the trend that everyone else is you know or you don't necessarily have to have the same beliefs as your parents and like the people around you which is really cool and it's okay like when you've grown up in the household similar but you know things change which i think is really awesome and definitely education i mean especially when i went to college and i started to learn like taking different classes regarding to like regarding justice like different kinds of classes that you didn't have in a conventional like i went to public school like public high school you know right. um curriculums are very you know they're not all inclusive of all the information that we should be learning and they kind of pick and choose what they kind of want to teach you. So kind of also having those learning experiences, whether it's in the classroom or, you know, with different groups of people as you grow up, it's different for everybody. Right. But kind of also just being open to learning different things kind of contributes to how your values and beliefs could definitely change over time. Because um, we do not just, you know, we don't have all the information with us. We never have all the information with us, but it's important to always kind of reflect on our values and beliefs on what we learn and kind of all that. Uh, and kind of just bring it into society and bring it into our everyday life to incorporate it. That's awesome. No, great. Um, okay, ready for the next one? Of course. All right. So um, what are the responsibilities of us as people, as individuals, um, in regards to the issues of social justice? Like, how can we step up and make a change? Or where do we have our voice, find our voice? Definitely. So the, kind of like the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, when um, Instagram had so many great resources, just like kind of like always on your timeline and everything. One of the things that I saw that I definitely had to repost to my story because I found it just so relatable is that we are all personally responsible to be more ethical than the society that we grew up in. We're obviously kind of seeing a lot of things kind of start clashing right now, things that have kind of not been addressed, right. you know, and you kind of see where it's taken us. So each of us as individuals, no matter how we've been raised, you know, when we've kind of realized like how we interact with the world could be different than others. It's, it's our responsibility to kind of take the information that people are like signaling to us, teaching us, saying that are different and have different perspectives than us and kind of like sit with that, learn from them and then really like understand that your view is not the whole world view. Right. Um, so but it's definitely our, what do you say? I feel like that can be hard sometimes because you think that the whole time you're right and then you're like, wait, I had no idea. Yeah. So it's just, we can't be so hard on ourselves. Like, Okay. One of the biggest things is constant self-reflection. Like we all walk through this world in different paths. Mm -hmm. um, but what I've really learned is like self-reflection, kind of sitting with yourself, kind of sitting with maybe you've had some reoccurring thoughts, things like that. You've, maybe you've had some conversations happening around you that you're like, hmm, I don't know. Sitting with that, those feelings and being like, what contributes to me feeling like good about this certain point? What contributes to me feeling bad about this certain point? Kind of seeing like where you stand in this mix. And That's if you don't really feel like you have all the information to really base a like, you know, believe or fact on something than doing your own research. Um, definitely also researching and just being open to, you know, understanding things, learning things that you don't usually choose. Like if you just like, you know, you just you just like to go watch like Real Housewives or something like that's cool. But then maybe one day actively, actively like going to the Netflix Black Lives Matter channel and like trying to watch something different. Right. Um, it's all about diversifying. We all need to be more very like intentional. Intentionality is one of my favorite words to use because we really need to be intentional with how we interact with people, we walk through life, how we interact with media, you know, all of those kinds of things. So how are we going to be intentional and kind of like, you don't have to bombard yourself and make yourself feel bad for not knowing these things, but how are you going to be intentional and kind of like opening your mind and learning about new things? 
I know that was a big runaround of an answer. I just keep, I just start rambling. <laughs> no, it's great, it's great. Um, but I also think that, and we'll talk about this a little bit later too, but you were saying there's different shows, there's different podcasts. Um, you can do your own personal research or find stuff on social media. But the thing is, is like for each person, something else is going to work, you know, just because someone recommended a podcast, you might not be a big podcast listener. So you try it. But I feel like there is so many resources. And until recently, I honestly, and after we had our conversation, I didn't know. Truthfully, I, I didn't really know. And so, um, yeah, I really didn't have a lot of idea about stuff and understand privilege to the extent that I do now because I've been researching, because I've been learning. So that's why um, this has been so wonderful. But I think that was great. And see, I, I mean, like, I mean, like, you know, you might, you know, there's difference, but I mean, I didn't really understand. I mean, you still know, never understand it. You're constantly learning. We're constantly always like working to be, you know, the goal is to be anti-racist always, but there's always places where you learn, oh, you know, maybe what I was doing, what I was saying, that doesn't really go towards the anti-racist mission, you know, all of that. Like, it's your job to then reflect on that and then change how you're interacting and like working that and taking that forward to work on how to be like anti-racist or something like that as an example. So yeah. It's very important for no one to make themselves feel bad about what they didn't know. You know, like if society really wanted to be a just society, like we would have not been raised in the culture that we've been raised in. We would not be, people wouldn't be living their whole lives not being aware of injustices that are occurring in society. It's, it's purposefully, you know, especially to like white people in general who really don't have to face as much. Like it's purposely shielded from them for their comfort. So, you know, like, it's not like a comfortable thing to just be like, oh, wow, like, I had no idea. Instead of just like feeling bad or like wanting to make yourself feel like a good person. So you just like try to be like, oh, I'm a nice, I'm a nice person, like justify mm -hmm. why you're a good person. Really like focus and be like, am I a good person? Like, if I really feel like this is wrong, then what can I do to contribute to change that? Because no one would want to be in that situation. And so being so also intentional, like you said, the intention mm -hmm. is so extreme. It's, it's definitely, a, it's definitely a thought process. Like it's, it's a constant thought process, constant self-reflection, like never taking everything for what it is and kind of just always, you know, thinking through really just like thinking everything through and continuing to just learn more and experience more and diversify who you're getting your information from for That's sure. Yeah, no that doubt. was one of the biggest things I realized is cause like I, I realized, you know, when I, when I was going on social media and everything and I was just kind of like, looking at all the postings, it was like, make sure your feeds are diverse. And I went and looked at my feed and I realized like I was not supporting black women like I should have been. Right. So um, I had black men, I had like, you know, a lot of other things, but I was like, why? Wow. You know, like I just sit there and be like, why is this? I mean, you know, it wasn't intentional for me, but for some reason that, that all that those perspectives, those women that are doing great work, even just being themselves on, on, on the internet and everything, I didn't have them on my feed. Right. So I went and like found them and I was like, wow, okay. And they really bring like thing to happen. Like I really, they speak the truth. The, the girls that I follow right now love them. And I'm just continuing mm -hmm. to try to like, you know, to do that because even those little things. I think literally the littlest things. things like it's just what you look at on your social media no you're good what you look at on your social media like that's something that you ingest and you look at every day that's a whole perspective that's missing you know right like no, whenever i read their posts now it's like i'm always thinking i'm like wow yeah they're right they're right and one of the most famous quotes malcolm x i think is the most like disrespected like under um served like person in the whole country is the black woman so they're very important to lift up, very important to support and just like really understand their perspective and like see how, like what they need and their support, you know, no, absolutely. How, to, how to change that because it's, yeah, it's quite, it's quite, it's, it's a very interesting thing, but um, that was, that was something that I just had like a moment that I had after the past like month or two. I just really think it's so crazy. It still like blows my mind. Absolutely. That there's so many things we just didn't know, like that we weren't taught in school and like, you know, it's just like coming up now on social media or on um, different accounts, things that we're checking out. I'm like, why did I not know about that riot? Why did I not know that that happened? Like they didn't teach us that in school. So like literally oftentimes, unless you go for it, like you dive in and do your own searching, you're not gonna have any idea. So it is up to us to like go for it, you know? And one of, yeah, the best example I have is Malcolm X. I done a lot more research on him. I really look up to him as a leader. You know, he really stood for what he believed in and didn't take any crap, any shit, whatever you want to call it. Like he really just pushed forward and did whatever he needed to do. Um, 
for just like black people in general, that was his thing. And I remember specifically in school, you know, you learn about Martin Luther King, everything like that. They also just try to like breeze over the fact that he was only peaceful, which unfortunately when you're peaceful, like nothing really gets done. He wasn't only peaceful, not that, you know, you, you do whatever you need to do, but they just try to avoid the part that like, not everything he did was peaceful. If he was peaceful, then why would we remember him for who he is? Because nothing really changed, you know, from what he did. He was still murdered by white supremacy itself, basically. So right. they kind of try to put that on a pedestal, like, oh, look how much got to happen when you're just peaceful, like Martin Luther King. Like, he was murdered by white people for hating him. He was the most hated man in America. And now people, like, kind of forget that, you know, these days. Um, but kind of on, a tint, on, like, a little side note. But Malcolm X, all I really learned about him in high school was that he, had a, he was a radical thinker. And that was like I, all I knew. That was literally I all like I knew. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like I didn't learn much either. Definitely didn't focus on him much at all. There's a good movie on Netflix. There's a Spike Lee movie about Malcolm X on Netflix. Um, I think it's just called like Malcolm or something. So um, and then I'm also trying to read his audio autobiography. That's on my reading list for upcoming. Um, but he's like he's extremely interesting. I mean, he grew up in his his family was um, like their house was burned down by the KKK. Like, he had a lot of things in his background and stuff that kind of contributed to who he was as a leader and, like, kind of his beliefs. So it's also interesting just to hear his whole story. So I definitely recommend people checking him out, too, just because I feel like he's a really underappreciated figure. Yeah. And he really was, like, really important for the movement. He's really just, like, an influential person that needs to be celebrated more instead of being, like, you know, kind of written off because people are kind of scared of his beliefs. So, so they say. Well, this will actually, this is a good move into our next question so and this is huge so how do we overcome being uncomfortable so you said that people are kind of like scared of his beliefs there's a lot of stuff that's like we're intimidated you know we're super scared and don't know how to come out of our shell or just don't know how to approach things appropriately especially if we've grown up you know sheltered we didn't know what there was to help with or that we didn't know how to have a voice so how would you suggest overcoming being uncomfortable and i know it's going to be different for everybody definitely so this is like kind of the most general way i can kind of put this for people from the perspective that like don't really know what to do you know necessarily getting involved in this kind of work and just like learning more um like the number one thing um for this like i'm obviously just elevating the voices of black people and things like that i'm not speaking for any of that i'm just from my perspective and like what i've learned and what i've adjusted like this isn't about white people and their comfort. So kind of like centering yourself and your comfort in this bigger struggle that like literally impacts people every day and has for centuries. Uh -huh. It's not, that's, that's dangerous to, to like literally center your like white feelings and be kind of scared of it and kind of like go away from it because right. that's how black people live and feel every day in the United States of America. So it's kind of like, even I hope that perspective just helps some people think like, you know what, you're right. Like, this isn't about my feelings and this is the time for me to really just dive in because people are feeling like this every day and no one wants to feel like that every day at all. Mm -hmm. So kind of like, you have, no yourself, idea. Mm -hmm, you have no idea. So like kind of sit with yourself and just be like, why can't I face discomfort? Because we have avoided this for so long. Like that is why this is like to where it is right now. And so blown over, like just blown up, not blown over. Like th yeah. this is, this is happening now. And this movement is just taking off. But this is, be it didn't have to be like this. It's because no one addressed it and no one wanted to make right the wrongs of the past in the right. past. Mm -hmm. So this has been happening, you know, it's just been changing in like kind of how it presents itself in our society as, you know, we've kind of drifted away from like actual like shadow slavery and whatnot. But this has just been building up and building up and building up with all the right. discriminations, all those kinds of things that have happened. So, um, it's just very important to like, that, like black people have felt like this for generations. Also trauma can be passed through DNA. So there are people nice. like being born with that in their DNA. So they're like literally biologically different because of like, just like, you know, like what they've had to go through. So that is completely, you know, when, even when you think about that, like, okay, like it's not about you, you know, just sit here and listen to what people have had to say because they've had to deal with it. So that's kind of like, it's not, I don't, it's not meant to be harsh, but you know, it's kind of like, sit with yourself and it's okay to feel uncomfortable. It's not a comfortable thing to talk about. And there's always going to be learning curves. No, not everyone knows the answer. You have to be willing to be corrected. You have to be willing to not center yourself and just uplift the voices of the people of the movement that it's for. Right. We're here to uplift black people and whatever demands they have, whatever they say is needed. That is our job to literally support them. Like at protests, like this is just like a plain example at protests. Um, if things are escalating between the police and the crowd, 
like it is expected of white people to be at that protest to literally place their bodies and shield the bodies of the black people behind them in front of the police because that is what you're there to do you're there to support and do whatever you need to do right so that's just kind of like a physical i guess kind of like example i could give um so it's just just to get you thinking like that but really just being open being open not not being like really upset and being like oh my feelings are hurt because we did you didn't know don't yep. be upset at yourself that you didn't know because the the main point and the be best thing that you're doing now is trying to understand and you're okay. trying to open your heart and you're trying to open your mind to listen and learn from new experiences and perspectives so i think that's the most important is just kind of reframing what discomfort and like uncomfortable conversations are because this can this can get better people can get more comfortable talking about it like society has made this an uncomfortable thing to talk about it doesn't have to be. Race is like the first thing that you notice with someone, you know, specifically race, but like differences and stuff. Those are the first, thing, first things you notice with someone. So like, we should be able to be able to hold conversations and understand how people walk through life differently because they have different skin tones, you know? It doesn't have to be so taboo. No, and I, I agree completely. And I also think that like, and you kind of covered this too, but you don't have to go in like head first, you know? You can mm -hmm. kind of like dip your toes in the water. You don't have to like all of a sudden know everything it's like all a process and about learning and being open and like we've been saying i think one of the hard things about being open sometimes is like you don't really know what you have to be open to if you don't educate yourself and you just go about trying to learn definitely definitely so, very huge for sure okay next one all right so let's see how i wanted to phrase this but okay so when is it our turn to kind of like as white women or as white individuals when is it kind of our turn to like step back and listen because we're out here doing our best to educate ourselves doing our best to learn um to have a voice you know to get past the discomfort to be open to be um flexible and ready to be there you know um but when is it kind of our turn to just take a step back and listen because that's like a lot of what's being asked of us is just like be there to hear our cry like be there to hear us listen and we'll tell you what we need but when is it our turn to listen and to become a better voice so in particular to like black lives matter movement and anything like kind of racial justice related especially everything people should be like open to having like multicultural like groups that are like pushing a cause but it is always our job especially in black lives matter and anything like that to take a step back and listen this is not our movement we are there to be supporters of it but it is not your movement so it's never your it's never your turn to just go and try to like step in and say this is what's needed um it's kind of like not talked about enough but kind of like the white savior um ship kind of like mentality um which is what a lot of like basically what our society kind of is full of right now um it's, it's always kind of been like that and people don't really talk about that like it's not for for white people to just kind of pop in push in their own ideas beliefs and then kind of like pop out but like have had that influence on a movement and on a fight that's not really theirs right that's like the main problem that's continued to happen is white people trying to make these decisions for people without like actually consulting black people and like you know the people that it directly affects right um so that's extremely important it's always it's always our chance to step back now if you're asked to do something by like a woman of color person of color then you can like totally i mean you were asked but please 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 do not lead chance at rallies, do not say you think you know what is needed because that is more detrimental to the movement and to black people in general than it is helpful. Like if that's how you're gonna be, then honestly, you just need to step back because that yeah. is not what needs to happen. People need to just please realize that. Um, I know people mean well, but there's a lot to learn. And a lot of times when you mean well, but you don't really do the research or like know how to act behind it, it just does more hurt. So it's just really, really important to, to do the, like, just not, don't take the lead. Um, we need to be amplifying black voices. We need to be listening to the communities, community leaders, and really just like seeing what they need and how we kind of fit into that puzzle. Cause we all have different roles. Right. If you're not, if you don't feel like you can be like protesting and like, you know, like protesting and things like that, totally fine. Yeah. Call, call elected officials, you know, like make statements at your city council budget meeting, like send in emails, like really get engaged. And um, there's, there's something for everybody. Um, so just know that, but just kind of like know kind of where you sit in it and make sure you're always kind of reflecting and be like, am I overstepping the boundaries and the line? No, definitely. And just like showing up every day, you know, like taking what you learn and listening and just coming up. And I think, no, wonderful.
Fabulous. So thank you everyone who has gotten on. I, we're still learning this um, live thing, but there's been the names popping up on the bottom the whole time. So if anyone has any questions at all or comments that they would like to share, we have one more question here and then we'll have time to, if anyone has anything they'd like to add. Um, Rake, I forgot to write your questions down on a piece of paper. They're on my phone. Don't want to pause anything. So if you want to type them out again, then that would be great. Um, yeah, and if anyone has any questions, feel free to comment below. Okay, so we did kind of like talk about this a little bit too, but the last one that I wrote down was um, what are some resources that you recommend or that you personally use to help educating? You've kind of talked about doing your own research, um, you know, podcasting and stuff, but if there's any specifics or anything that you'd suggest. Yes, definitely. So I, I really enjoy reading. So reading social justice books is like, was kind of the first thing, like other than class, reading myself was kind of what, when I really was like, wow, like these, these books are just full of information that no one, no one knows, you know, like in the mainstream, like, you know, especially in like white culture, kind of like that kind of thing. Cause like no one wants to talk about it and no one really is taught that. Right. So books have been really great for me. I'll never forget. I read um, The New Jim Crow. It's by Michelle Alexander. I read that probably like four years ago just like mind blowing, honestly, um, that really opened my eyes to a lot more of injustices. It just kind of really goes through like mass incarceration and just kind of like the next like way to enslave black people, you know, like once you're, if you're, if you are like in prison or jail, like technically you can, you are like property of the state and they can like make you like work and like kind of profit off of you without really giving you anything like prisoners that work and make like things for like major companies, everyone needs to check out what companies are made with prison labor, like what pro companies and products use prison labor. Cause we should really also be just like, sorry, this is a big side note, but we should really be focusing on where we spend our money. Definitely oh, focus on where you spend your money. Money is power. The people have the power with their money. So please, please, please look at your spending habits and kind of see where you can kind of, you know, funnel money towards black owned businesses and kind of like yeah. stop buying products that are supported by prison labor or just any kind of like, you know, not, not like good quality labor and things like that but books for sure new jim crow great just kind of talks about like the different ways that society has changed to criminalize and kind of just like hurt, um black people black men all of that that's a great book i just finished reading reading, reading white rage actually um my classmate from my master's um program gave it to me really great book um it's not talked about as much but i thought it was really great it's kind of just like a history book it's kind of like a rewritten history but like including a lot of like the actual things that happened to black people throughout the history of the United States. Um, just like, like stories. Didn't know about that. Yeah. And, <laughs> and like really, 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 really terrible things. Um, like everyone should be required to read books like that. Um, right. It's just, it's just mind blowing. So like right white rage, if you're not really as much of a reader, there's also a million other books like color of law. I like a lot of specific books too. color of law is all about redlining kind of like how we've like separated um, communities by color. Um, yeah. in the United States, how we like bank loans, money, you know, all of that. There's a book on everything. So definitely check out books if you like to read. Um, TV, the most simple thing I can say is watch 13th on Netflix. It's a great documentary. Um, really just goes through um, 13th Amendment, kind of how it didn't abolish slavery, like people said. Um, now, one of, like how I said earlier, how I was like really not um, supporting Black women like I should have. Um, on Instagram, I totally recommend everyone to follow Monique Melton. That is M-O-N-I-Q-U-E Melton, M-E-L-T-O-N. She is an anti-racism educator. Um, she's really great on her um, Instagram. I just follow her there. Unapologetic, says it like it is. It's like a really great place to, to start. Um, some people, depending on, yeah, definitely recommend. Some people, depending on like what stage you are, you might feel like, Oh wow, she's kind of like a lot, but that's kind of what people need to hear. There's no, this isn't the time to be tiptoeing around anything, you know. Like this is the time to just face it head on. So I feel like she's just a great resource. She has great perspectives, great commentary, um, and she also has great programs. Like I haven't, I haven't paid for one of them yet, but I'm planning on paying for one. Um, definitely have to support her and support the hard work that she does. So she's definitely a great resource. Um, I have someone else, but I can't think of her name right now. But Instagram is great um if you haven't heard what listen to 1619 podcast 1619 is great into america is a podcast on um oh it's on any podcast but it's by like nbc um or msnbc kind of great it kind of just like goes through stories of people that are like going through different um issues in america it's kind of like into america and like into like class into like different things like regarding like 
farm work, like undocumented farm workers, like all these different perspectives and kind of like how they are intertwined in our society and how like you aren't probably connected with that, but it's like a lot of different injustices that are happening and kind of like the really difficult experiences that they have. Um, what is that one from? That's Into America. I need to check that out too. So I definitely recommend that. And then, like I said, again, I just want, I just want to say like, definitely, please, please, please diversify who you're following. Also, how to be an anti-racist, um, Ibrahim Kendi, and anything ta Hissy Coates, too. He's a writer. Great. Um, I actually have the audiobook for how to be an anti-racist, so audiobooks are also a great thing. Like, I like to I was gonna say that. look clean, you know, it's nice. Like, Ibrahim talks to you, so it's pretty cool, too. So there's a lot of different ways. I know everyone adjusts things differently, um, but please, 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 like, make an effort to really change the kind of, like, your viewing, your viewing or what you're listening to every once in a while. It's going to be, like, really worthwhile. No, I totally, I agree. That's so great, Brooke. You're literally so wonderful. You know this. Um, do you remember, this is terrible. Do you remember the questions that I sent you that Reiko said? Because um, I think if I pause it and move my phone around, then it will hang up and I don't want it to do that. I don't know if he sent me Reiko's, honestly. I just had these ones. Those are the <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we have friends who had other small questions, but we can ask those first. The ones that were short that I just sent, the most recent things. Could, should I try to get off and look at them? No. Well, that, that's I, what I, isn't that what I've been answering? No. I, it's fine. It's probably in there. there. She just had specifics. Well, if anyone, like I said. <laughs> I feel bad. I'm like, I want to answer questions, but I don't, I don't think I saw them. No, it's, it's okay. It was, there was something short, but I didn't write them in here either when I asked, so I don't know. It's okay. Well, do you have do you have anything else that you would like to add? Um, like I said, um, you were like the first person as like a white woman. I was like, okay, this will be really great for me to reach out to another friend who knows a lot about this stuff and can inform me and kind of help me get started, really, you know, because I was a little uncomfortable. But now I've been learning so much. I'm definitely more comfortable. It's still a work in progress because sometimes I'm like, oh, not sure, but learning and the educating part is kind of fun like there's so much to learn about and mm -hmm. there's a lot of bad stuff that you find out about or stuff that you just like had no idea though that's like pretty harsh and it's really important for us to understand and it's really important for us to not push it away because it's harsh but really like ingest it and be like this is reality right um people just kind of try to you know like brush over the things that they don't want to know but that doesn't help anyone and it really doesn't help yourself either like life is beautiful but life is also extremely you know there's a lot of horrible things also. So how are we going to really try to contribute and like use the power that we have as a people, as a collective, like good, mm -hmm. like think of us as a collective good, like to really kind of move forward. Um, so that's definitely important to think about how, like what kind of role you have in that in like our society. Um, also, I did want to say um, when you're kind of like getting into this work, like please don't like burden um, black people, people of color with your questions, just because they are a person of color does not mean that they owe you answers. That is like a big thing when people are trying to be, you know, trying to be informed, trying to learn. So they just like go to the closest person that they know that's like black or of color and then try to ask them all these questions. Like that is not their job. They already live with this. You don't know what, how they already live with this on a daily basis. You don't know how they've been feeling through everything that's been going on. You know, this takes a toll. This takes a toll on everyone in a different way. Please, please, please just Google. Like literally use the internet, look for anti-racism educators and see what they're saying and see where they lead to you to. Like, please do not burden other people with your literal lack of like understanding because this is their lived lives. Like it's a privilege to be able to be learning about this right now um, instead of actually having lived it. And like, especially because black experience has been so like, just like, People are like, oh, that doesn't happen. You know, that did, I don't think it was like a racial thing. They like, that's happened for so long. This is just like, finally, like people are like, why, why did like the, like the, like, you know, the murder of George Floyd and Ahmaud and things like that. Like, why would, did that really change? Like people were like, wow. Cause this happens right. all the time. Right. So it's like, I mean, you know, I'm glad it happened. I think everyone is like really glad it's happened and it's just like kind of just going to keep moving forward and it's not, the momentum's not going to stop, but just like kind of remember your place and the fact that like, it's, it's a really big privilege to just start learning about it. We all benefit from like white supremacy, like especially as a white person, like you're literally born into a white supremacy world. Right. Like before you even know what you're doing, like you're benefiting off white supremacy and you're like living in a, like just like a white, white based system right so like you don't really realize it because everything is like made for you made by people that look like you so it's just important to kind of like understand that as well i think that's a very important thing to think about just lost my train of thought okay it was something you just said and i had this brilliant thought oh my gosh what the heck did you just say it was boiling in my head 
it, like we're born into white supremacy culture like we're born we're born into it it's everything's made made by us made by people that look like us right it's before that run by people that look like us oh oh no 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 um okay great we got there so how you were saying how like george floyd dying um George Floyd dying and Ahmaud Arbery dying. The thing is, is like you were saying, that's kind of like all of a sudden waking people up or so this movement started and everything to a new extreme. But with a lot of things that happen amongst people, just because you have not witnessed like a police altercation or something occurring um, with a person of color, doesn't mean that it doesn't happen, you know? And that's like the crazy thing is because we all assume that out in society, we're all we're all living different lives, and some people are in places where they experience and see a lot more things like that happening than others, you know. And so, just because you don't personally see it, does not mean people are making it up. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely, it's definitely really important. And I wanted to address one chance twenty four. Um, thank you for commenting that. First off, um, yes. So obviously, I'm not in that position because I haven't had anyone ask me that before. I was just literally. Um, you know, like, that's kind of what I've seen online. That's kind of like a lot of the conversations that I've been hearing, what I've kind of been ingesting. That's what people have been saying, just because they were feeling a lot of emotions and they kind of felt like it was a burden on them. And they were just kind of, they were just, they, from their opinions, they were upset just because, you know, they've been living with these burdens. So yeah, definitely. I mean, it all depends on relationships. You know, if someone has a black friend or you as a black individual feels like you want people to come to you, that is totally cool. Cause I know there are plenty of people on the internet. I forget what the guy is, but he's just like, dear white people, he's been doing all these videos just as like a black male and just kind of like really going through his experiences and things like that. He kind of like was like, you know what, I'm going to use my place as a black man to try to educate. And that's beautiful. That's wonderful. Um, I just wanted it to be like for the overall. Just don't assume that that's like what the first person you run to is like your first. Yes. Friend. Obviously, if you have that relationship with someone and they feel comfortable and they want you to talk about that, of course, I do not want anyone to like shy away from those things. It's just like thinking thinking of that first because i think a lot of white people don't think that of that as a burden yeah um so it's also just that awareness so thank you so much for saying that um definitely appreciate your opinion yeah and also like you said out of a place of respect and genuinely wanting to know it's yeah yeah because some people are just angry because they, they think that they need to know but mm -hmm. you know i think that that's super important well if anyone else has anything else they want to add we'll wait for a few minutes did you have a wonderful day Brooke? I did. Um, I'm pretty tired. I was like kind of traveling the past week, so I haven't been sleeping a ton, but I had a good day. You know, I finally got back to my house, so I kind of just like unpacked, watched TV, unwound a little bit, did a little <laughs> face mask, you know, did some self-care. Yeah, sounds like it's nice. nice. I need to go do that too before I go to bed. I'm literally going to go to sleep by 10. Um, oh, that's nice. I've been sleeping at like three, so I'm hoping I can go to bed early tonight. Uh, need to. Definitely need to. Oh my goodness. Yeah, um, what'd you say? I said it's just been it's just been a pain staying up so late because I'm like my you know, I just feel like I feel off I'm very big about like a schedule so my schedule a little messed up. No, I get it. So it's like to mess with your mood and like how you're feeling your day. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so um, first of all, like I said to you before, thank you so much for doing this. I feel like you are a pot of information. You know, all kinds of wonderful stuff, and I feel like are such an advocate, have such a great voice, and um you helped me be a lot less uncomfortable just with our conversation because it was a good way for me to learn. So I had a feeling that other people would benefit from this um, and everything went great. So thank you. Thank you so much for being here. My first episode of chat E like I said, guys, so every week there will be someone different. I'm not going to reveal my secret for next week yet, but I already do have someone else set up. So it'll be super fun. Um, but thank you. Thank you for getting on the show and if anyone has any questions from oh Rico just said this was great thanks, thanks Rico <laughs> um but for if anyone has any questions and then they send them to me yeah if anyone is not comfortable putting a question below and has a comment or question at all um send me a dm or Brooke I guess too right if yeah yeah everyone talk to you um it shows up on your account too so just send us a message send us what you want to hear from, what you want to hear about, and we will um, make sure to get that answer for you. Yes, definitely. I'm really glad to be here. I feel special being the first guest. So I was like, oh, wow, you chose me. <laughs> so I'm very grateful. I'm appreciative of that. Thanks for giving me, honestly, this platform. It's my first time on live. It's like my first time doing something like this. So it was good practice for me, too, because I do want to be like a 
a speaker kind of like leader in my future career. So, you know, I always got to practice like speaking, especially on all platforms. Like I'm not usually the one to be like talking online. So it's kind of fun. I like it. No, it is. And it's like super personal. Honestly, I get like weird on these too, because usually when I make videos on social media, I record them. So this is like live. So sometimes I'm because then I can like record <laughs> yeah. nine times if I need to, you know. So this is definitely um, a new approach, but it's really fun. It's honestly really fun. I think it's fun too. I you're easy to talk to also, obviously. Oh, thanks. That's, that's what I'm feeling about you too. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, like I said, thank you, thank you, thank you. Anyone has any questions or comments, please feel free to send them our way. Um, Brooke, I will be sending you a text. Thank you again. And everyone have a great night. Thanks. Have a good night. All right, bye. Bye.